Welcome back to Getting Back in Shape with 19th Century Methods. Today, we are going to examine the historical use of the Iron Wand and perform an entire original exercise sequence from the year 1900. Let's see how it measures up against other fitness methods. Although the most popular exercise wands were made of wood, in Germany, between around 1880 and 1905, iron wands were also extremely popular. In terms of dimensions, they are very similar to wooden wands, but are constructed of metals such as iron, steel, nickel, and even silver. Due to the heavier weight, you can't perform some of the more nimble and sophisticated actions that you can with the wooden wands, but iron wands do use a bit more muscular strength, allowing for a more strenuous workout, and they can also be used as a structural tool in positions where you use the wand to support your own body weight. These iron wands were often used in mass exercises at Turner Physical Culture Festivals in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and in the USA. These elaborate sequences would be performed by enormous groups, sometimes numbering in the tens of thousands, and in completely synchronized unison. A witness at the time described these mass wand exercises as follows, quote, Another signal, and as a wind sweeps over a wheat field, so these thousands of young men sway together, a mass of white and yellow animated by a common impulse. It is the poetry of motion, expanded to the proportions of an epic. Forward and backward, up and down, to one side and the other, the living pattern tirelessly turns and weaves and bends. The actors may never have practiced these movements altogether, yet the rhythm is as faultless as the breaking of surf. These wand exercises were often designated as obligatory, which meant that anyone who didn't join in the exercises would be banned from participating in the rest of the festival. This really shows the different mindset they had back then, how the focus was not as much on specialization or creating champions, but instead on developing everyone's overall fitness. Now, you may be wondering how, in an age when mass communication and the internet didn't exist, were thousands of people from all across the country able to show up the day before an event and then the very next day perform it all together in perfect unison. It was accomplished by sending the printed exercise out about four months in advance, published in the Turner magazines of the time, which you see here. Then everyone would study and practice the sequence knowing exactly how it would be timed and performed to live music. The sequence we are going to perform today comes from Professor Richard Pertuch, a Turner director from Germany who immigrated to America, where he worked as a cowboy in the Wild West before founding the Philadelphia Turngemeinde. There, in June of 1900, he created an iron wand exercise for the National Turner Festival that took place in Philadelphia more than 120 years ago. A first-hand account from that time observed that all of Pertuch's drills were done, quote, with a precision that not even the Kaiser's soldiers, and his are the best in the world, could surpass. So we know that Professor Pertuch was very zealous about proper form and precision, as most of the Turners tended to be. Pertuch's instructions call for a nickel-plated iron wand weighing five pounds. Today, I am using something quite close, a five-pound steel wand plated with nickel and chromium. As to technique, you can't move these as fast as the lighter wooden wands. It's physically impossible due to the inertia of the metal. Nevertheless, a German treatise from the period instructs, quote, The individual movements of each exercise are short, quick, and definite, not slow and clumsy. The position of the arms is fully extended wherever no arm bends are prescribed. Following is Pertu's entire original sequence and progression from the period. Called, at the time, the finest wand drill ever put together, it begins with simple, easy movements and progresses in difficulty.
So some thoughts after having done this exercise. Obviously the addition of four, five, six, seven pounds concentrated in this metal rod does make the exercise a bit more strenuous on a cardiovascular level. Actually one place I didn't expect was my trunk muscles are worked, were worked a lot more intensely in this exercise. And uh, because you don't think about the fact that um, when you're doing those trunk bends and folding forward into the side, this wand, when it's extended forward or above your head, is adding a, uh, a lot more torque to those parts of your body. So the place I'm feeling it the most is actually the lower back, uh, the abs, and uh, basically all, of the, all the trunk muscles. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video about the use of the German iron wand. Thanks so much and have a great day. If you'd like to know more about these exercises in even greater depth and how they are done, please consider supporting us on Patreon, a link to which can be found in the video description below. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.